What's up, guys? It's your boys, Wolkie, back out with some more of the Chris Watts video content. And to, by popular demand, by hundreds of you guys, almost thousands of you guys, want me to watch the Troy McCoy interview with FBI, the CBI, on the day five of the Chris Watts case. So this was actually after they found out that he was the murderer and so forth. But there's things that are, like, weary and questionable about the fire stick and why he was giving it to him and, and so forth. And... It's definitely very confusing, but you guys want me to watch this, and it's improved audio on a channel called I Swear Kimberly. So give her some love, subscribe, comment, like, and share over on her channel. She did post this a couple years ago, so for those that probably have watched it already, I definitely understand that you guys are like, it's reused content. We're we're fairly new, and we're dr going down this rabbit hole of content, and we're, we're piling everything and anything we can for this case so before we go any further make sure you guys just subscribe to the youtube channel by hitting that wiper icon down at the bottom right hit that bell icon next to it so when i do post videos like this one you guys will get that little ring notification that i posted that video then you guys can watch comment like and share and again thank you guys so very much for that continued love and support that you guys show on this channel every single day i can't thank you guys enough keep doing what you guys are doing and we'll continue to keep growing together like I said before, go to I Swear Kimberly. It's a new channel that I've never watched before, but you guys have been sending me this exact link plus other ones, but this one looks like the most very detailed and down to the, the, the nitty gritty of stuff that we need to look at. So with that being said, let's get a video. Hi, this is Kimberly. This video is being posted. I know a lot of you have already seen it before simply because it went along with chapter one of my daddy is a hero. It was mentioned in that chapter. I wanted to play it for those that may not have heard it or they've not heard it in a long time. I've never would heard like it. to listen to it again. And I've cleaned up the audio, meaning I took out long breaks and pauses so that it goes quicker. <laughs> it saved a good eight minutes. I hope you enjoy. And I do have a second video or another video following this one, but oh. I have to edit it and because the intro got way too long. Give me a bit of time to get that edited and I'll get it right out to you. Okay. Much love and peace. Thank you for listening. So we wanted to sit down with you again for just a few minutes, clarify some timeline stuff. Okay. And uh have a few more questions here, all right, with that. Yes, sir. So, let's see. 8, 17, 18. Is it M-C-C-O-Y? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. What's your date of birth, Troy? Three. All right, what's your home address? 31, Greeley, Colorado. Uh, yes, sir. Kind of unusual. Oh, man. There's so many people that get lost coming to my house because there's another 49th, but it's just, I think, Avenue and not Court. Yeah. And it's up on the north side of town. Totally the other end. Of yeah, right. Yeah, so. We got the street roads, avenue, and something. So they need to rename their streets there, sounds like. Oh, what's the zip sense. up there? I do believe they, I think they did. All right. And that number I called you on, is that a work phone? Yes, sir. Do you have a personal phone? Yeah. I don't remember it since we came last time. That's fine. no problem. We're from Kansas, so. Oh, we are? I have that one memorized. Uh -huh. Where are you from, Kansas? Uh, Elkhart. Mm, I don't know this one. Okay. Uh, my number is 970. All right. How recent is that? 970. All right. How recent is that? This number? Yeah. I mean, uh, I think we've had it for eight months or so. Oh, for a while. Yeah. Okay. I just can't remember. I can't remember my work phone. Yeah, no problem. I have it down my pickup. So <laughs> if it's not my phone, I don't remember okay, it. So let's let's cover some uh, some timeline stuff here. Yes, sir. So let's let's start with start with on Sunday. So Sunday would be the twelfth. Yes. Did you talk to no, Chris sir. at all on the twelfth? I didn't speak to him over the weekend. I seen him on Friday. I seen him on Friday. So that was the last yes, time you saw him before, before the Monday. work week. Yes. Okay. I seen him on Friday, and he'd taken off Friday to uh, take Shanann to the airport for. Phoenix. Okay. And then he told me he wanted to me to look at his fire stick that he bought. I See? said, okay. So oh, like he, TV fire. See, people believe that this fire stick is code word for explosiveness. Fire stick. Yeah, okay. Amazon fire stick. Sure. So before the workday ended on Friday, he's told me that he'd meet me at the uh, Safeway parking lot there in Port Lupton. And uh, he showed up in their Lexus and Bell and CC were in the back seat. So he jumped out, gave me the fire stick. And right after he gave me the fire stick, that's whenever Cody called. Cody Roberts, the operator of the mm -hmm. Circuit 319, and said that he thought there was a leak in the bypass line. And that's on 319, you said? Yes, the Circuit 319. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because that bypass line is now locked and tagged out because we've done that Monday morning. Okay. Oh, that's what's Which okay, that leak. So Bella. So that leak Bella. also he mentioned to Nicole Kessinger as well. And CC. Or CC. Yeah. 
were in the back seat. Yes, sir. And was was Shannon Shannon Shannon? No, sir. Was she you in the front seat? Already taken her to the airport. You already took her there. Yes. You remember about what time this was? Um. I'm going to go back to my text messages I gave you yeah, no because he told me he was point, he was sitting by the uh, 5.0. There was an orange Mustang sitting in the parking lot. Okay. <laughs> I think it was one of the ladies that, uh, well, it looked just like the one I used to have. Okay. Because I had a red one. I was telling you about that earlier. Yeah. So, and he's a huge Ford guy because he was a master mechanic. For yeah, I remember he said something about that. Sorry. No it? problem. Chris Watts. Okay. Okay, thanks. Ford, your link. He was sent it there. Okay, right here. It's at uh, 3.05. Okay. Is whenever you send me the text message here, part next to the orange 5.0. Okay. So, and he's driving the white Lexus. Yes, sir. And Bill and CC were both in the back. They were buckled up in their car seat, and uh, he had pulled forward in the parking spot, and I pulled back here, and he was talking to me for I don't know, like three or four minutes, and you could hear him hollering in there. So he got back in the Lexus and he backed it up so they could see me, and they waved at me and everything like that. Okay. All right, and so you have no no text conversation, no phone conversation, nothing like that over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. No, sir. nothing. Okay, so Monday morning. Okay. What time do you leave to go to work? I leave. Well, I usually leave my house about six o'clock. Okay. Is that I'm supposed to be here about six thirty? Here at the office. Yes. So, so did you come straight to the office? See, also the way that he's talking to Troy, is the reason why they should be talking to NK this way, and how they talk to uh, Lauren Arnold, uh, Shannon's best friend from high school. On, yes, sir, I did. On uh, Monday morning? Yeah. So, 8.13. Yeah, and I actually, I received a phone call from him Monday morning, but I couldn't answer it while I was driving. So, you can see in here, it's phone call declined. Okay. What, uh, do you have the time yes, on sir, that I'll one? Yes, sir, i the time stamp for you. That's what I'm looking for. See, they're all willing to give phones Monday. and time stamps. Chris Watts. Right Nicole here, didn't. It's the same time. See, and call canceled because I was driving. Because okay. I can't accept that. Yeah. And that's 6.43. So, you got to, so, incoming from Chris. At 6.43. Drink of water all the time. I have a partial. McCoy said he had received a phone call from ago. Watts at 643, but McCoy said he declined the phone call. Right. Right. Why? Okay, so incoming, but you declined it because it's on yes, your sir, work I phone have. and it tracks all that. Well, my, my work phone is set up through my Bluetooth in my phone or my truck. Okay. Yeah, with that uh, geotab, it can tell when it's going to tell. Call okay. Whenever you're driving. And you're going to get busted for that. Yeah. Is that right? You will get slapped. Okay. Yeah, because I came down from Keith Nosich and he's pretty high up in the company. He said that we can't use him anymore. Okay. So. And that's when you're driving out to the site. No, sir. That's when I was driving to work. Driving to work. Six okay. forty-three. So apparently you'd gotten to work a little bit after after yeah, six forty-five. That no, I would have been running behind that day then. Okay. Do you remember about what time you came? You got here? No, I don't. Okay. Can we check? My, you guys can run my geotab if that helps. See, I like need. how he's like, oh, okay. you can check this. Yes. You can check that. No problem. Oh. <laughs> His answers are Might spot on. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's the important stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. Thanks. Okay. The fire stick is kind of questionable. All right. So, you, so you come in the office between six forty-five and seven. Would that be fair? Yeah, that would be fair. Okay. Because I always try to hit up the burrito guy that comes at seven thirty. Okay. <laughs> Gabriel. Yeah, Gabriel. So, did you get a burrito that morning? Yes, sir. I did. Okay. And he's here by seven thirty. Yes. He's usually here about seven thirty and just a little bit after. Okay. So, when you come to the office, what what's your routine? When I come to the office, I always park on the uh, be the north side of the parking lot down here where my truck is now. And I walk through those doors, I come directly in the doors, and then I go into the break room. Because that break room to the south, or the north end of the office, is where all of our guys sit. All okay. the whole team's there, okay. usually. And then Luke's office is right down the way, so I just always park on the north end. Okay. So you, you come in, do you get, like, your assignments for the day to check on? Well, I you come know, in, you go I pull check. my computer. Okay. You know, my work laptop, I can check Signet, whatever, you know, the case is. Usually, since I'm a lead, or a field coordinator, mm -hmm. I go in and I talk with Luke, and uh, or talk with Chad, because Chad's also a field coordinator. That's Chad McNeil. Yes, sir. So when you come in and check with those guys, what do you do? You establish your just, route for the day or your yeah, routine for the day? Yeah, topics for the day. I mean, okay. whatever um, a gentleman needs. I sent out an email last week on Friday night telling them that when you start checking plungers in our wells, because they're supposed to be checked quarterly, would be what Anadarko is supposed to require. So a lot of our new guys do not feel comfortable with that procedure. So, you know, I just talked to them, see if they need help anywhere, you know, what was going on for that day. And Chad told me that we were going to start the Survey 1029, which is a pumping unit. Mm -hmm. So he'd like to have me out there that day. And uh, we was going to test that back pressure line on the 319 to verify that there was a leak. On the 319, check what? To uh, verify that there was a leak on the back pressure line. On the back pressure? Yes, the one, the same one that Cody called me about on Friday, sir. I told you I spoke to Cody whenever I talked to Chris. Yeah, okay. That, that's what he mentioned. I also think it's just ironically funny that these guys, like the, the friends, the workers, um, interviews that they've done, they're spot on with their questions. They don't 
deteriorate off. They don't make excuses, lie about this, or jokingly like what like they're doing their interview. The detective is doing fantastic. The interviewer is being or the person's being interviewed. Like you see a day and night comparison to these interviews and Nicole's interviews. And the stain on the ground is yeah, that correct? Yeah, the stain okay. on the ground. Yep. Okay. So, so there was a problem with the three nineteen. Okay. Have, have a leak? Is that correct? Yes, okay. there was. Okay. Yeah, in the bypass line, we were able to verify that. So the back pressure in the That's bypass the same line. Same picture well, he sent to Nicole. I don't know which one it is. It's the one that goes up on the top fill of the tank. To verify because that survey set up kind of weird because it's all older stuff. Mm. But we have logged and tagged there. It's the first line as you're walking to the stairs. Right over on your right hand side is that first line because that's where the staining was, and it's at the elbow underneath the ground is where I think the threads washed out. Okay. So there was oil bubbling up from there, and that's what caused the stain. Okay, gotcha. Okay, what time do you leave here on Monday, approximately? Pro approximately. Brigo guy comes at 7.30. Might have talked to the guys for like another 10 minutes. So probably 7.40. I was on the road. Okay. Ish. So probably, so we call it 7.45 on the road? Yeah, I would say so, sir. Okay. So. Do you remember that day where you headed first? My first location was going to be to head out to Serbia. So, well, okay. The Serbia Do you remember 319. the 319 or the, or the 1029? No, it was the 319 because they were testing that bypass line because I had the call from Chris here. Let me verify. I was at 643 when I told you about mm -hmm. it. And then I talked to Chad McNeil. And then after that, I talked to Chris again at 740 a.m. incoming call because I just left the office. So 7.40 a.m., you had a, was it another call from Chris? Yeah, it was another call from Chris. So okay. by 7.40, whenever I pulled over to take this phone call, I believe I was at the intersection of Bull County Road 37 and I think it's 18 right there, where the hell got there it is. So 37 and 18? Yes. I had to pull over to the side of the road and park right because they're building a new construction there. Okay. The uh, Gracie Horizontals are going in. So Man, the, uh, the details of this is the guy. location that held that lease. So I just pulled off the road right there to be able to take the call. How far is that from here? How far is that from the office? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, how far? Where you took that call, how far is that from here? From the 319? No, from here. Betty. From the office. From the office, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. You just go right down to 22. You turn on 22. So I'd say about maybe 10 minutes. So maybe I left right after the burrito. Okay. So... I mean, we can pull up my geotab, guys. That way I'm not, you okay. know, over the timeline. So what do, what do you and Chris talk about? What's going on on the field? Because he told me he was at the survey 319, and that he was going to test the bypass line. I said, okay. okay, I'll be out there in just a minute to be able to help you. But, I mean, of course, I'm at County Road 52 and 37. So that's going to take me a while to get out to survey. How long would it take you to get to survey 319 from where, from where you stopped to take this phone call? From where I stopped to take the phone call, you had to get back on County Road 52 all the way to Hudson and we jump on I-76 just like Luke took you guys out mm -hmm. of survey. So probably about another 40 minutes to be able to get there with drive time. Okay. So that's why I was telling you the other day I tried I thought I arrived on location about 8 30. Okay. To nine. So somewhere in that ballpark. So if you get that phone call at 7 40, how long did you guys talk? You remember? Yeah it was two, minutes. Minutes. two, two minutes. minutes. Okay. Yes sir. Yeah because he, he asked me where I was at and I told him I pulled over to take his phone call at the hell got there's and then he told me he was at the serving 319, and I said, I'll be out there in a minute because Chad was going to have me come out to 1029 anyway. Okay. So I told him I'd head to that 319. Okay. Was Chris scheduled to go to 319 that morning? He told me on Friday whenever we spoke with Cody. So it was planned. Cody, because he was right there because I took the call on Bluetooth because I was parked in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Whenever he found out about the leak, he said, I'll go out and look at that thing first thing Monday morning. Chris said he was going to go out first thing Monday morning, first thing Monday morning and take a look, look at, at the, the 319. 319. Yes, sir. Mm. To try to verify that. Whether or not that line was leaking or but not. But since Friday, this was planned. I believe he called Cody. When I talked to Cody, he called Cody on Friday or Sunday at 5 p.m. and told him that he was going to head out to survey first thing Monday morning. Okay. So so the fact that he was there already and calling you about the 319 was no surprise? No. I just used it, you know, telling me that, yeah, he was out on location and everything. I said, okay, I'll be out there in a little bit. That okay. was it. All right. And so it, it took you approximately four hours to drive out there. Yeah, so we're now say. we're probably, what, eight. 40, 830, somewhere yeah, in that range? 830, 840. Okay. So when you get out there, who who's out there when you get there? When I arrive on location, Chris is parked by the wheelheads. Okay. Or the well, one wheelhead of that location. Yep. Then we have Chad McNeil. When you, when you say he's parked by the wellhead, where where is he? Okay. Like um, here, you guys have a picture, picture of location? Yes, I do. Um, yeah. Okay. And yeah, I can show you exactly where his truck was parked because his truck was parked where the headlights were facing towards the wellhead. His truck was parked right here. I wish we could draw that. Headlights. Yeah. Draw his car on there for me. You want me to try to draw a car? That is a box. Just, okay. <laughs> a box. 
I'm like, I didn't know I was going to be testing all my drawing yeah, skills. Right. So which way is right he, which way is he facing? The so, headlights of the pickup are facing toward the wellhead. Okay, so let's see. So if I do this and say that his truck is pointed that way. Yeah, well, more of an angle where it's pointed directly at the wellhead. Okay. So yeah, that's exactly. It was pointed. His headlights were pointed directly at the wellhead. Okay. All right. And uh, who else is there? Melissa, Parrish, and Chad McNeil. And where are they? They are parked right here on location, sir. Just on the other side yes, of the wellhead the there. Facing, kind of where we're parked here. Yeah. Well, yeah, their trucks are facing toward the exit. Like okay. They pulled in and kind of circled and parked right here. And I parked right over here. Okay. Are those typical spots to park? Yeah. I okay. mean, it's just, I was just pulling up so we're not in any way because we're supposed to pull up um, where you don't have to back or anything like that. So I usually try to pull around or pull back far enough where I know that if there's a truck parked over here, I can pull around and get away, you know, so I don't have to. Okay. Have anybody move their vehicles or back up? Because if they back up, then that sends a. How many times he sways back and okay. forth? It, it was that a, a usual place for somebody to park where Chris parked? Now that I think about it, it is unusual. Because, why, why do you say that? Well, if you're going to test the bypass line, to me, it would where make is more that sense. bypass line? Okay, the bypass line is coming off your separator, or I thought that, if I'm not mistaken, sir, I think the bypass line and the back pressure line are tied in, one and the same. Okay. And the back pressure line comes off from the front of the doghouse on the separator. And then the back pressure line is back here by the flow line, where it comes in at the header of the separator, where the gas and it will end the separator. Okay. Mm -hmm. And those lines run directly underneath, and then come right back over here to the edge of the tank, where both of those lines come oh. up and on top of the tank. And that leak was in here, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. It was right there by the stairs, right as you go up the, okay. the catwalk. So to me, I'm lazy. If I pull up on location, <laughs> I would pull up over in here somewhere. I would have took this circle right here and mm -hmm. stopped right here in order to be closer to the separator and everything to be able to test that bypass line. Okay, so by him parking here, he kind of blocks this yeah, access? Yeah, no, nobody can circle around the wellhead. Okay, is, is it normal for somebody to park in that direction, that fashion? No, I, well, I mean, now that I think what, what's all has happened, mm -hmm. no, but I mean, at first, I, it didn't even, you know, flag anything for me, but that's where his truck was parked. Okay. So, I mean, to me, no, if you're gonna go out there and test the bypass line and that's all you had to do, then I would have parked over here to be able to be closer to this and this. Okay. Plus, I'd imagine you have to get some tools out of your truck. Yeah, you know, press a wrench, do, do whatever you to be able to pressure there. up the Isn't vessel. Okay. What tools did he have out? Um, whenever I got there, everybody carries a crescent wrench in their back pocket. Whenever I arrived on location, um, he used his shovel to dig out the hole right there at the, uh, at the bypass line. Mm -hmm. And then whenever I got there, they'd already verified that the by or bypass line or back pressure line, whichever one that is, failed and that it was leaking underneath ground because you could see like a little bitty puddle right there. And uh, Chad McNeil, when he got his lockout tag out, he put it on the um, bypass line and I think they did the bypass Or was that put there specifically to throw them off stating that they can't use this well site? So they're like, oh, we gotta destroy, or destroy this, this site, whatever, or it's, it's leaking. So then they accidentally had, or they are going to have the whole plan of the Shenan, Bella, CC, and stuff go out to that location in the white Lexus and blow it up and make it look like an accident. Then Chris would have been able to get money from Anadarko because they had that situation with that other explosion at the house where it claimed two lives. And he would have been able to get that. And he would have been able to get the life insurance, the policies. It's getting scary. Like, By, or the bypass line at the separator. To make sure it was locked out in both directions so pressure couldn't get in there and feed any more up so we wouldn't have any further contamination and then after that chad and uh melissa they pulled away since i parked over here with chris and chris had went back to his truck to check his phone so i grabbed his shovel from right here and i walked it back over to his pickup and handed it to him and he said no there's still a, you know there's since that stain's still there and the dirt's already stained we're going to put that back in there so then he filled back in the hole and then he came back over to the pickup and then after that, that, he left first because I told him I grabbed the gate. So he got out of here, went through, and then I followed behind him, and I closed the gate behind me. Okay. So when you get there... Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, let me back up. Yeah, whatever you need. So you get there. Chris is parked here. Yes, sir. As in, say, who else was there already? Chad McNeil. Chad. Chad. On location, and okay, so Melissa Parrish. They Chad were already there before me. and Melissa are both on scene. Oh, yes. As... Because Cody Roberts was over at the 1029. Cody was already out of survey, but he was at the 1029 because he was going to start that pumping unit. He said he was already out of survey, just a like generic ranch or at this site. 
Well, oh, no, not at this site. Okay. Survey Ranch is the way we speak upon it is consistent of seven sites on the survey. And the 1020 line, if you enter the gate from the south, which I'm sure you guys did when you went out there, because yeah. that's the only entrance that they are supposed to allow us mm -hmm. to go through. As you go up, instead of curving back to go to the 319, you continue to go straight. And there's like a little riverbed right okay. there that you cross over and go back into, and that's where the pumping unit is. Okay. All right, so you, you get on scene. Chad and Melissa are already there. Yes, sir. And Chris. Yes. Anybody else? No. Okay. Do you see what Chad and Melissa are doing? They were just over there by the bypass line. Over here? Yes. Over here? Yeah, over there by the bypass line. Okay. Were all three of them over here? Confirming that. Yes. When okay. I pulled up on location, all three of them were over there. Okay. Anything when did seem they go unusual? There? No. Do they have just interviews? Out of no. the ordinary? No. I, well, well, as soon as I pulled up and uh, I talked to Chad McNeil about this because he remembered me making a comment that I didn't even remember. Um, as soon as I walked out on location, I got out of my truck, and Chris is usually a um, fairly decently dressed man. He's always got on uh, pretty tight fitting FRs, like really, you know, like he wears area out pants. What's FR? Fire resistant. Fire resistant okay. Um He usually wears that. He was wearing a blue shirt that was baggy, looked like he'd had like an older shirt for him. So it wasn't a fire resistant shirt? It was. It was. Okay. It was a fire resistant shirt, but, you know, different companies made different styles of t-shirts, mm -hmm. and this is not something that, you know, I was used to seeing him in. It was kind of a baggy t-shirt, okay. and then he had a pair of pull-on boots. He had a black shirt when and he left. from every time that I can remember out in the field, he had an old pair of boots that he was lace up, so the toe was about to come off of, mm -hmm. and then here about three weeks ago, he bought a brand new pair of red, red wing boots down at the uh, FR store okay. here in Platteville, and he always wore those so when i seen him you know on those i was like what you slumming it today bud and he laughed you know and that was it that was all that it was but i didn't notice that it was you know out of the ordinary i just figured okay well if he didn't get a lot of sleep last night and he was in a rush you know he just grabbed what he had and went out to location okay but i think it was a pair of red wing pull-up boots because i think the only style of boots he wears is red wing okay what color was the shirt it was blue a very dark blue, like a navy blue. Okay. And that shirt was different than the shirts that he usually wore. Yes. Well, usually he wears, a, um, I believe, it, yeah, it's Ariat that makes most of ours that come from down there. They're a little bit better looking. What's the company name again? Uh, Ariat. How do you spell that? I have no idea. Is <laughs> that the shirt you were wearing uh, when we first yeah. spoke to you? Okay. Yeah. Those yeah. style of t-shirts. Okay. Is so what that's we, uh, more fun shirts. shirts. Yeah. Okay. You know, they fit a little bit yeah. closer and Black stuff like that. But this other shirt he had, because... Like you guys had said the last time, he's lost a lot of weight mm -hmm. here in like the last six months to a year. So I think it was one of his old shirts that he had, you know, in his closet. Because I even have some old shirts like that that are baggy as heck. Yeah. So. Okay. So he's wearing his old boots. I would say old, they're older. I would say they're older because they're not his new ones. And I've only seen him that I've noticed wear lace-ups. And these were still bonds. And these were still bonds. Yes. Okay. Because the reason why draw my drew my attention to him is... It drives me nuts if anybody tucks their boots mm -hmm. or their pants inside their boots and the boot deal showing. Mm -hmm. That drives me insane. <laughs> so he had it like half tucked. It was weird because mm -hmm. one side was down and the other side was uh, tucked into his boot. Okay. So it instantly drew my attention. Which doesn't That's show from the camera. Is, is, he, well, is yeah. he generally, He's when generally, you see him, okay, yeah, let, me, let me see if I can make this one make sense. So generally when you see him in a work setting, yes, he's at least dressed... He, he's put together. Yes, I guess, he's dressed appropriate. Yes. Okay. And I mean, not, not sloppily. No, he looks like, you know, a field coordinator looks. So how do you okay. do you know, that? Because, you know, the higher up you go and everything like that, people pay more, more and more attention to your dress shirt. All that stuff so I was trying to come to work looking as nice as I possibly can. I've only got what God gave me. So, <laughs> but, uh, so you, you know, he was always nicely dressed. Okay. And that was just kind of threw me off, so I gave him shit about it, you know. I just made that comment. Mm -hmm. I was loving it today, and that was it. I mean, that's as far as it went. Chad laughed, Melissa laughed. That was all. What about his pants? What kind of pants was he wearing? Um, I believe they, those would have been, I think the manufacturer on this particular style of pants is Bulwark. Okay. And he usually wears Ariat mm. because they were a baggier pant okay. than what I'm used to seeing him in. Did you notice anything, you know, besides the bagginess, anything else about his clothing? clothing? No. I mean, that was it. I knew he was wearing a, it had to have been an older shirt back from whenever, mm -hmm. you know, he was bigger. And then the pants and the boots. Did you notice if his shirt was dirtier than normal? No, it looked clean. Pants dirtier than normal. No, the second like thing looked clean. There was no stains on his pants. There was no stains on his shirt. Okay. Nothing. Did he seem out of sorts? Was he tired, sweaty? Um, no. I, acting different, more quiet than usual? I know you said he's well, a quiet yeah, guy. He's kind of a quiet guy, but, you know, um, that particular day, you know, I tried to joke around because I joke around with everybody. Mm -hmm. That's just the guy that I am in the group. 
and you know he would kind of joke around a little bit and stuff like that but that was it he was you know quiet some mm -hmm. days chris is you know pretty talkative you can have an interaction with him and then other days he's more reserved and he really doesn't you know engage with you whenever you do that because mm -hmm. we joke about things we we both watched, watched a lot of the same movies you know and stuff like that so we say stupid movie lines mm -hmm. and he yeah. just wouldn't you know wasn't replying like he normally would but i didn't think it was out of sorts at the time because of the fact that you know okay well maybe he woke up late he's tired i don't know you yeah know? he's tired from so you guys show up there you mess with a back pressure line did you get it fixed at that point or did you not get it fixed sir okay that line is still currently as far as i know <laughs> locked out tagged out okay so make it look so like how long are you guys on scene to try to fix that um well since they'd already diagnosed the problem we wasn't there a very short period like 10 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'm guessing, okay. that I was there. Okay. Because so, they, they had already been there before me and diagnosed that it was leaking. Mm -hmm. So once it's diagnosed that it was leaking, you guys figure out that you can't fix it right at the moment. Right. You guys move on? Yeah, well, okay. we have to move on as long as it's locked and tagged out. Mm -hmm. And that line wasn't going to interfere. They wanted us to open up that top field because that location is a Thames location, which is, uh, uh, the Thames is what helps with emissions. So we don't admit any gas out of the top of sure. the patch or anything. So they wanted that line open, and that's the reason why it was open. Because Cody See, now didn't these even open are until last week. So we went ahead and closed it, locked and tagged it out. The well was still able to run because it's almost uh, it was almost a load out there. I think Cody said it had about nine foot in it, makes about two inches a day. He said by Thursday or Friday that tank should be ready to haul. So that's what we did. We left it running. Okay. So and just so I'm clear, everybody left when you guys left. Yeah, they okay. left, and then... And did um, you guys return to the 319 at all? No, sir. That day? I didn't return to the 319 that day. I went back over to the 1029. Okay. The 1029 and pumping unit is where we were. Everybody? Yeah, well, uh, Melissa, uh, Cody was mm -hmm. over there because Cody was already at the 1019 prior. Okay. And then Chris pulled I'm sorry, up, and I pulled up behind him. 1019 or 1029? 1029. Okay. 1029. I'll make sure we're talking about the right one. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. 319 to 1029. Yes, so I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're still okay. in a different moment, man. Yeah. Okay, so let me do that one again. So so yes, everybody sir. left. Yes. And then everybody went over to the twenty the ten twenty nine. Yes, sir. Is that correct? 1029. Okay. But Along him and with I Cody. were the last ones on the three nineteen location. Okay. Because I was standing <clears> over <throat> by the that valve that we locked and tagged out. Mm -hmm. And Chris and it was over by his pickup. <laughs> Melissa and Chad got in their trucks and they drove off and said, We'll see you guys at the ten twenty nine. I said, okay. okay. So I grabbed his shovel, walked it over to his pickup, and he said, no, they're still staining on that ground, so we need to cover that up. So he covered it up, we got the truck, I told him I closed the gate, he left, and then I left. What's the point of covering it up? Just covering up curious. Well, if a state inspector comes out and they find, like, a puddle of oil right down. there, then that would be a, a fine, instantly. Okay. But if there's this staining on the ground, then you have a chance to investigate what happened. So we're still going to get the line fixed, but until the line was fixed, they wanted the line covered up. Gotcha. Just curious. No, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you guys leave, go to the 1029. Yes, sir. And you guys stay there for the rest of the day? I was there for almost the rest of the day. I didn't leave until around 2 o'clock. Okay. What but, about Chris? Um, Chris, I'm, I'm thinking it's about 11 o'clock to noon. Yeah, just whenever, Because he kept getting phone calls mm -hmm. from a lady that was at the house, ringing the doorbell and everything like that. Nicole. And couldn't get a hold of Shanann. Because she tried to call her, I guess, several times that morning. And said that she'd missed the uh, doctor's appointment or whatever that she had. Okay. So he was worried. He told me that he was getting worried about it because could, nobody could reach her. So about 11 o'clock or so, he told us he was going home. But when Chad and McNeil and I talked, I mean, I don't know if this would be anything that you guys could look into further for um, any kind of evidence or anything, but he told us that he had to use the restroom on the 1029. So he told me it was number two. So he told us. Well, I said, let's go over there by that tank at the 1029. Mm -hmm. So he backed his truck into the uh, sunflowers at the 1029 and used the restroom. Okay. I mean, that's not out of the norm for us because we don't have porta right. potties yeah. out there. But, I mean, that is something that he did do on that location. Mm. When did you and Chad kind of discuss things? Um, well, I spoke with him again today. Okay. He's like, you know, you want to make sure that you bring that up to those gentlemen in case it can't help anything. Right. Because I, I talked to Chad and I talked to Luke and told him that I was going to be coming in today. Okay. You know, because, I mean, Chad's the other field coordinator, so mm -hmm. I was keeping it in the loop with him. And I called him because Luke didn't answer the first time. So I just wanted to call Luke to let him know that I was coming into the office today to do an interview with the job. Okay. Okay. Can we back up to the 319 for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Um, when he was, was he looking around, just get at kind of the surroundings at all? Did well, you notice? okay. Whenever he got back, whenever we got ready to get back in our pickups and leave, he was 
messing on the phone, you know, like texting or whatever. I don't know if he was texting the lady that was at the house or whatever the case may be. It didn't seem odd to me at the mm. time because I thought yeah, he was walking toward the back of his pickup. And before we leave the location, we're supposed to do a circle check, a 360 circle check. That means you walk all the way around your pickup to verify that there's nothing in your way so you don't hit it. So whenever I, I seen him walking, he walked just right past his truck, just a little bit, not very far, and looked out in the field like that, and then he walked right back. And that was it. Did he do a full check, or did he look at a specific point? No, he didn't look at any specific point. It's like his eyes were just kind of up in the, in the, like looking toward the sky. Okay. He just had his head up and just kind of looked around like that, and then turned around and walked right back. So was he looking out into the field, or yes. was he looking back? He was up looking the out into the field to the south. I, yeah, that would be. The, I guess that would be the south. I get confused because I'm not. Yeah. Basically okay. towards seventy six. So All right, south is that right way. here. Yeah, he walked right past his pickup, just a little ways, not like super far, but just right past his pickup because mm -hmm. I thought he was doing a circle check. And then he looked out, just looked across the field real quick, and then he walked right back to his truck. Okay. Got it. So was he was he off the off the pad out here in the weeds? Yeah, well, yeah, because the way he parked his truck with his tailgate, mm -hmm. his tailgate was right kind of by the weeds. Right back here? Yeah, right back here. Okay. And, he, and he's looking off in this direction, is that? Yeah, he was looking off in the, well, yeah, because he walked right past here, and he was looking back in here. I mean, it was just brief. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he was staring at nothing like that. He just walked back the there, map. kind of glanced around, and then walked right back to his pickup. Okay. But if you're doing a, a safety check, you should be looking yeah, here, Yeah, if you're doing a circle check, here. you should be walking right next to your pickup. You check your wheel wells and everything yeah. to verify that there's nothing there or anything behind you when you go to back up, you know, that you're going to hit because we have a lot of operators hit fixed objects. I'm sure. So, yeah. <laughs> I would be one. <laughs> it's a big deal. So. I'm sure it is. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything out here that would be of interest at all? No, because I mean the well pad for this site is just right here. Okay. This is just fenced off right out in here because there is a fence around this mm -hmm. whole entire location and then the gate right there and we're supposed to keep the gate closed because the landowner or the gentleman that rents the ground doesn't want his cattle inside this, you know, right. doesn't hit any valves or oh, anything yeah. like that. So that's all there is right here because the well head's here, your separator's here, your tank's here. That's the only thing that we mess with right there. Okay, yeah. fair enough. And then uh, when you got to the site, uh, I think you said he had a shovel and he was already digging? Well, no, the shovel was already, whenever I got to the 319, mm -hmm. they'd already dug it up. Okay. His shovel was standing right next to the, uh, um, the freaking catwalk. So whenever I walked up, his shovel was right up here. Okay. And the hole had already been dug How right there. How um, That big around? How deep? Um, eight inches. Okay. Maybe eight, nine inches. Because I don't think the lines are very deep underneath that berm. And then before they elbow and then come up right there by the tanks. Mm -hmm. So you could see a little puddle right there of oil, but that big around, and that's it. Okay. Did Chad or Melissa have shovels out too? No, not that I know of, because I think uh, Chris had already done that. Because okay. that was the only shovel that I seen that was out of the pickup on location. Okay. Did Melissa or Chad have any other tools out? No, everybody just carries their presser wrench. Okay. So that's our thing. As soon as we get out of the truck as operators, 90% of our job will focus on a 12 inch crescent wrench. Okay. So I always carry that in my back pocket even when I hop out because, you know, we use them to change or turn the wing valves on the well head, the inlet valves, the separator, the dump valves, everything. We use the 12 inch for everything. Okay. So if you jump out of your truck without the crescent wrench, it's kind of like you're useless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always give everybody, all the new guys heck whenever they jump out. I was like, you haven't been operating very long, have you? Because you forgot your crescent wrench. So they'll go back and get it out of their pickup. Mm -hmm. okay. So. Yeah, fair enough. All right. And then... So Chris is getting phone calls and texts, um, can't find Shanann. Right. And he, he says he's worried about her, and then he, he leaves at some point. Do you remember about when that was? I would say between 11 and 12. Okay. Okay. Somewhere in that time frame window. I don't we'll remember exactly. I know I wear a watch, but, you know, I didn't think anything was didn't out of the Yeah. at okay. all. So no. I didn't, you know, attribute that to anything. Yeah. And how far is it from the 1029 to the 319? Um, 1029 to the 319 minutes so it's pretty close 10 minutes yeah it's not that far away i mean you have to take that road go out back out of the 319 and you head back toward that original gate mm -hmm. but as soon as you hit that intersection where you turn and go to the gate you can turn right and then you head up that hill just a little ways and then like i was telling you that riverbed and you cross the riverbed and the 1029 is right there okay mm -hmm. so all those wells are pretty short driving distance from each other yeah. so they're okay and so with his, his statement that he made that oh he didn't he was scared that he was going to blow up the survey area and cause damage to other people. If you're five minutes away, that's significantly quite a bit, bit, bit of distance. Um, and I've looked at the map. Like, there's not a lot of locations around Survey 319 that would be, like, in blast radius. So, with him stating that, oh, I was going to self-delete by pouring gasoline on myself, 
That's hogwash. That gasoline can was going to be used for explosiveness. College, he didn't go back to the 319. No. But Chad and I were staying on location at the 1029 because we had to call, um, I think, Steve Ergonati, and he shoots fluid levels for us because we had that pumping unit going for almost two hours, and the stuffing box was heating up in the polish rod because there was no fluid. It wouldn't bring any fluid down the hole. So I don't know if something's happened down the hole with the pump, but um, the stuffing box is right on, top of, or right on top of the wellhead, and as soon as that thing heats up, you have to keep spraying it or putting grease on it or anything like that to keep it cool because as soon as you burn those rubbers, if any fluid does come up, then it would go all over the place. Sure. Yeah. So we had to shut the unit down, change out the stuffing box rubbers, and then we gave uh, Steve or er Ergonati a call, and he has a uh, echo meter type deal where he shoots uh, nitrogen into the back side of the casing so you can see the fluid level. Hmm. So actually he shot it into the tubing, but you can see the fluid level it on changed, his computer. Because it, it can tell hole. you that sound wave that runs down the well, it'll tell you where all the collars are and everything. And I stayed out there while they shot the fluid level. Okay. All right, so you work on the 1029 for the rest of the day? Yes, and about 2 o'clock I left. Chad was out there longer because he was talking to Steve. Okay. And you left, Crazy and did, what'd you do after that? I left and went straight back toward, um, like, Hudson mm -hmm. and everything, so I could come back into the middle of the field. That way I could be there if anybody needed anything, because being a field coordinator, you have to wait until everybody leaves the field and everybody checks out to make sure everybody makes it home safe before you can leave the field. So then as soon as the last person checked out, I can give you the time on that, too. Yeah. Sprint the bar. Okay, it's Thursday. Sorry, there's been a lot of activity in the group messages. Yeah, I'm sure there has. I get it, yeah. There's Tuesday. Okay, this is what time I checked out. Headed out, Daniel Barr, and I checked out right there, right after Daniel Barr. And what time was that? So, I'm guessing that was about around 3.56 p.m. Until after 4, maybe? Yeah. Maybe right at 4? And Chris didn't see the message when he was leaving the field, so I put Chris's out as well. Okay. Everybody have a good evening. Can I scroll up to the beginning of the day? I understand that. Oh, yeah, that's fine, sir. No. When you check into a site, too, you most people will use the group me to say, hey, I'm here, or I'm over here. Okay, that's Saturday, cases. Sunday, because this is pictures really of Molly. He worked the weekend. Asking okay. him these right. questions. And then Cody at 6.30 or 6.28 a.m. in the field. Yeah. But we're out in the field, I don't know. Um, Luke's saying that Alex is on PTO. Okay. So Tony or Robbie to please cover that route. And I got a 02 hit at 11.21 uh, a.m. on my gas monitor because okay. I was getting um, a pipe wrench out of my toolbox and if you stand too close to that exhaust where your truck's running oh, yeah. it'll give you a hit <laughs> so the IOC called me three times sensitive. oh yeah wow. they had to call me three times because now anytime our monitors ding or we get a hit yeah. the IOC calls to verify that we're okay mm. okay and then okay okay would it be unusual for people to not check in on grouping no not all the time okay. I mean if you're on the field and as long as it's usually after 6 30 ish um alex ray he'll always send a message whenever he's out in the field and usually alex gets out there real early like 5 30 he's almost like my alarm because <laughs> he sends a message whenever he gets out to the field but he was off all the way from monday till thursday i believe so on tuesday he started his day like any others by leaving his house early uh, mccoy said he met with his team and made plans for the day mccoy said he learned from luke Eepley that watts would not be at work on tuesday McCoy said he got a burrito from the mobile vendor, went out to the oil rig, uh, assisted one of the guys. McCoy said after he left the site, he went to a training location located near the intersection, County Road 47, and which was in southeast of Colorado, McCoy said. This site is about 25 miles from the Anadarko office. McCoy said that the site is an oil pad, which is used for pneumatic process. This was part of the training. McCoy said he was at the training until 1. And what that's about? on uh, Luke's calendar down there if we need that. <clears throat> okay. What about for Chris? Does he usually check in? Um, no, usually he comes to the office. He usually he comes to yeah. the office. Because usually we just see all each other out in the office because he usually carries a big red jug that he fills up with water every morning. It's about a big, and he always gets water at the uh, ice machine down there in the break room. Never did. So for Monday, would it have been unusual for him to not stop at the office first? Well, he told me on Friday that he was going out to the 319 right. to check out that leak. Okay. So we didn't think anything of it. Yeah, but just overall. Is just that... over, yeah, because he always comes to the office. Okay. You know? Always or? I would say pretty much always. Okay. You know, he's, he's there because that's where him and I meet because we're both field coordinators and he'll, you know, talk to me about any issues that we're going to have on the field that day or what we need to do. Okay. So we'll just go over that and then we'll head to whatever locations we need to.
but I always meet him every morning down there in the break room. Okay. Do you know why he was so quick to jump on this 319? No, sir. To go check it? I don't. I mean, because we're always, we're all the way back at Friday. Right. And he's talking about, hey, I'll it go Monday. It was going to be demolished right. in September. No. And Cody's like, okay. You know, because Cody's the operator out there. So. And why, I mean, why, would, why wasn't Cody fixing it? Well, Cody found the stain, and Cody found that stain later on in the evening. I can see what time on Friday Cody okay. called me. Yeah. And he said he was going to run back to a couple different locations and get, or back to at least one of the locations out there where he had some. Uh, so it wasn't Chris in the beginning. And that's just some stuff that we can mix in with the uh, um, the ground, any kind of oil that sets in there, and that'll help break that stuff down and everything and um, remediate that stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see. Would it be typical for somebody to declare ahead days out, like before the weekend um, starts, that, hey, I'm going to be doing this, or would that usually be something you do the well, day morning of? Chris has said since he lived on 52, right off mm -hmm. Highway 52, that it's a straight shot from him to leave his house, go straight to Hudson, and then jump on 76 okay. and go out there and verify it. And usually when we verify a line that's got a leak, we usually have more than one person out there. Okay. That way if we do send pressure to that line, one person could be here verifying, the other person could be at the separator sending the pressure. That way if there is a leak, we can hurry up and shut it off. Okay. That way we don't have excess contamination. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, that makes sense. Whenever Cody Roberts called me, the last time, because I called him and asked him how it was going, and then he called me again whenever I was in the parking lot on Friday of that, that week. It was at 3.13 p.m. whenever Cody Roberts called me and, and identified that there was a leak out at Survey Ranch, or at least at the time. And Chris was like, oh, I'll do it. Yeah. And I told him, don't worry about it, dude. It's Friday. You know, we'll double check it on Monday. We'll go out there on Monday morning and verify. And that's whenever Chris said, I'll go out there on Monday morning. So, so it's already planned. Or something like that. Yeah, usually he is. I mean, he's really good about doing that stuff. Let's go to Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday morning, tell me what you do. Tuesday morning, I come into the office, meet with the group, you know, talk about whatever we got to do that day. Um, I know that we were going to, we had training set up to go because Luke sent out a message for training that we had to have at the Aquaterra State. So I went to the Aquaterra State first. No, not first. Um, I'm trying to pull it up for you. Sure. Okay, we're still on Monday. Let's go to Tuesday. Do you have any contact with Chris on uh, Monday evening? Monday evening? Text messages I gave you. Yeah, I think uh, I just sent just him a text. So he gave okay. text messages. Uh, Chris was pretty short. Or just so he didn't delete? Yeah, none of his replies were very long. No. But and then Luke sent out in the group me that morning at 631 that Chris would not be in that day. 631? Yes, because I guess he called and talked to Chris. Tuesday, or yeah, Tuesday morning. Who did? Luke, Luke Apple. Apple. Luke. Okay. okay, they ordered an air compressor. Everyone meet me at the Aquaterra State, 1836 at 1115 p.m. for some training. Bring your Mod 1 books if you have them, because we've got to complete our Mod 1 before November for any uh, APC blue badges. What's a Mod 1? A Mod 1 is a general knowledge of all your parts, moving parts, your separators, your pumping units, your ECDs, your gas compressors, your VRUs, your VRTs. So they want you to be able to go out to a location and walk them through every step on how that functions. So I tested out last year, last year or the beginning of this year on it, and if you didn't get a two all the way around, then you would have to turn around and redo it. So the ones that I missed were going over some of that, and Luke had another meeting that day, so we were able, or he had to have a phone call at 1 o'clock. So we sold that location, and we went over to air something. So Aquaterra State's not anywhere. All right, so Monday morning, I'm sorry, Tuesday morning, Came here. Yes. Got your burrito. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And what, what do you do? Do you hang around the office? You go check stuff? Well, I hang around the office for a little bit, just talk to the guys. And then after that, I'm trying to remember honestly if it was Tuesday or what day it was. Victor Zambala was having trouble gauging the tank. So I went out with him because he's one of our new guys. He's having trouble color cutting. And that was at the Canon 6768. And where's I that one there, at? Um, right off County Road 22. So, fairly close. Yeah, County Road 22 and 31. Okay. So, um, I'm trying to remember whether or not Tuesday, because Tuesday you guys had me come back, I believe, to the office. I think we mm -hmm. spoke Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Wednesday. In? Okay. Some multiple well, interviews. Okay, I get, no, I got a call from the officer in Frederick, but that was at 2 o'clock or something like okay. that. So, I know I, I either helped Gage Tanks or something that morning, and uh, I told them that we needed to head to training. So we headed out, or did I go with Daniel Barr? I don't know. If you guys pull my car to site, 
you guys can tell exactly where I was. I was either with Daniel Barr or Victor Zabala mm. that day. Okay. So then you yeah, go to the training. Up, look that up. Yeah, we go to the training. What we time was that? Training. Oh, well, that we had to be there by, I like guess, what, 11.15, is that what I said? Yeah, I think that was what you said. Yeah, 11.15 for the Mod 1 training. So I show up at the Mod 1 training. And where is that at? Uh, the Aquaterra State. Where is that at? Aquaterra State is, I don't know what the intersecting county road is, but 47 and 4, and then you go east a quarter and south into two. Okay, how so far is that from that here? He knows oh, all it's it's on the other side of Hudson. So oh, it's a ways. Yeah, it's on the other side. Right. Like, if you take 52 out, like you're going through Hudson, mm -hmm. straight through Hudson, the first road right outside of Hudson, if you're heading to the east, is County Road 47, first dirt road that goes south. So you take that dirt road, go south all the way to County Road 4, <coughs> Excuse me. and then from 4 over about a quarter of a mile, and then south into it. Oh, okay. okay. Is that like a training center for you guys? No, that's just a vertical that they wasted a lot of money on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, it's, it's built closest to the HD sites. Uh, it's the only site that we have in the field that has pneumatic air, okay. where all the dumps and everything are run off air compressors. So that's the reason why he went there to train us, because he wanted to go over the air compressor portion of the training. Okay. So how long does the training last? Um, almost until 1 o'clock, because Luke had 15 minutes until he had to be on the phone whenever we were wrapping up. Okay. So what do you do after you leave the training? Okay, there from that point... You know, I've got everything here going through my head, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? Because it's been since Monday since we've heard anything from Shanann. Okay, right? wait, wait, let me stop you there. No, you're fine. So you said you got everything in your head. What? Tell me what that means. Well, everything that's going on. I with, mean, with? Yeah, well, Chris took off okay. work, you know, and I'm worried about his wife and his kids because I've known his wife and his kids, you know. I've been over, hung out with Shanann, hung out with Bella and everything, so I'm like, what's going on here? And he's been real short with me on text messages, mm -hmm. you know. And there's so been they no even news updates. I've been seeing, you know, stuff coming out that people are looking for me. Everybody's sharing it on Facebook. So I was like, well, if nothing else, it's one o'clock. I don't have anything else to do. I'll head there. back out toward that three or that 319, okay. and you know, see if I see anything out of the norm and stuff like that. And that's the same time that that officer. He called already me. knew. What prompts you to, to want to go to the 319? Because that was the first location we were at that morning. Okay, just. Because or yeah, something's tripping honestly, your suspicion here, obviously. Well, I mean, honestly, because I've seen him in the different clothes, okay? i seen him in that. And then, you know, and he just was short with me that day. Okay. You know, he wasn't really, like, engaging in conversations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, 11 o'clock to noon, his wife's gone, you know, mm -hmm. supposedly. And, he, you know, he thought that she went to a friend's house or whatever. I'm like, this is, you know... Even in my head, it's not adding up. So you've been thinking about this quite a bit. As, yeah. As, what as, they say anything I, about Monday went along. And work with. They're all like my brothers. Yeah. You know, honestly. You know, he walked over from his pickup before I ever even got out of my truck, and he was right here. And I've signed the JSA right there. Okay. Did he ask you what you were doing? So it's water yeah, and truck. I told him I was looking for a crescent wrench. Okay. But that was bullshit. Well, I didn't. Just because things have been so out of sorts, I wanted to, you know, to go out here to see if I've seen anything because I've spoken to the officer, too. Okay. Mm. When you, you you remember what the officer's name that you spoke to? Um, I, I got a voicemail, and I spoke to him at like two o four. But you know things in my head weren't adding up correctly mm -hmm. in my eyes. So I do have a voicemail from him Tuesday, Hudson, Colorado. Okay, here's the voicemail then. Cause I didn't delete it. At what time? Uh, he so called there, me. There's the wellhead. So he said he his truck was pointed at the wellhead over here. Because he said it was looking out to the gate as well. But then he, he didn't drive back and forth to drop in the girls. Really training. For Troy McCoy, um, this is Officer Walsh with the Fire Police Department. I was wondering if you could give me a call back. Can you replay that first part again? Uh, can you replay that first part again? Officer Walsh. So this message is for Troy McCoy. Um, this is Officer Walsh with the Possibly would be, uh, or and or that you work out at a site 
where he was going to be working. So anyway, he gave your name. I was just going to talk to you. A couple questions with regard to Chris, and that would be it. So if you could give me a call, you're an officer, Wall, G-W-A-L-J-E, of the Frederick Police Department. You feel more comfortable. Yeah, really. So if you call the police department, I'm currently there, or uh, currently here, I should say, and I can talk to you at the office if you feel more comfortable calling that number. Uh, but again, my cell is 303-500-4073 if I have to leave. Thank you. Good night. All right, thanks. Yeah. Did you know that the water guy was going to be out there? Oh, uh, no, I didn't. Okay. No, the what water guy the was water out there. Well, Cody Roberts for? told me that he uh, was going to have the load bottom down at Surrey. And then he also told me that the load line was leaking on the tank. Okay. Because that load line is leaking on the tank that was almost full. That was there. on Tuesday? Or was that another day? <clears throat> I think it was on... Tuesday, and he called me and told me that they were going to have that uh, pit bottomed out. And I think the water truck drove me, told me that he got like 15 or 20 barrels of oil out of there, or not oil, but water, and then he pulled the rest of the oil and the BSW that was on top of the tank. Okay. So is it normal for you to sign this? If you if you show up on site when they're on site, they yes, want you, you to sign to that? Yes, you have to sign that. You have to? Say, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So he's, so you pull up around here, yeah. or yeah, approximately... Here. He was with Nicole. Yeah. He, he comes over before you're even out of your car. Or yeah, you're before I even get out of my pickup. Okay. Do you ever get out of your pickup? Yes. Okay. Um, do, you, do you walk around, take a no, look? No, I mean, whenever I get out of the pickup to talk to him. Okay. Because he's walking, you know, he's walking up and he's right here by my truck, so I get out, you know, and everything and talk with him. And then he told me, you know, that he's here to pull a load and everything like mm -hmm. that. And to, I need to sign his JSA. And the screen is scratched the hell on that JSA. <laughs> I'm sure it is. You couldn't read nothing if you wanted to. So I input my name. And then I asked him, I said, where do I sign, sir? So I handed it back to him. He handed it back to me after he got me to the screen where I needed to sign. And then I signed my name. Okay. All right. Then, so does he leave? All right, I'm sorry, go back to his truck? Yes, sir. He, okay. he went back to his truck. Right. And then what do you do? I get back in my truck because then I looked at the clock and it's already freaking like 2.04 around that time period so I'm gonna go ahead and get back in my truck and I just leave location okay so you weren't there for what five ten minutes at I most? wasn't there for, no sir I wasn't there very long at all okay and that gentleman told me that if he found my crescent wrench that he would lay it up on you know the battery or the tank or the separator for me okay so all right mm. did, did you have a chance to look out in this direction at all no, sir I did he was just on you that quick yeah he, I mean he was just right there next to me so <laughs> okay. I was like okay and that's good too because they're supposed to be able to approach people mm -hmm. You know, as soon as they get, as soon as they see somebody pull up on location, mm -hmm. they will approach you. Okay. You know, they're supposed to. That's what they're supposed to do. I so I wasn't shocked to see him or nothing like that, but he yeah. was just right there at the pickup. So I signed the JSA and, you know, because in my heart of hearts, I didn't want to believe that Chris had done anything. You know, I've been his friend for so Why did they automatically years, assume you know, something happened to Chris? But with not getting back to anybody. That's you know, what's confusing. I'm calling her parents and just being like, hey, you know, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm safe and sound. Bella and the kids are with me. We're good. You know, I was like, that was the location that he was at that morning. So that's why I went out there. Okay. Because, you know, everybody's looking for clues and tips, anything that can help. And I honestly just want to help. And something, really something's did. needling you about this. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, you know, I didn't say it in our first interview, but the clothes. Mm -hmm. The clothes, it was just different to me. Yeah, and then but whenever I told you about how either. he walked by the back of his truck, it was odd. And then now all of a sudden I find out, you know, the next day, that his girls are gone and there's a missing persons report and everything for him and nobody's heard nothing from him. You know, I'm a father. If my wife was gone... And there's only a uh, missing report because NK or NA was freaking out. If it wasn't for NA, this, again, would have been a whole different ballpark. And everything like that, I'd be freaking out. You know? Oh, yeah. And, you know, he's just like, hey, guys, I gotta go. You know, it wasn't like necessarily like a panic whenever he took There's off. There's no urgency day. to it. You know, but he's like, hey, you know, I, I just got to go. And that's all he said because he rolled down his window and he pulled up to Chad McNeil's pickup that day. And he's like, hey, guys, I got to go. You know, something's not right at home. And then he drove off. How did he drive? And he just pulled away normal. It wasn't like he was in a fire rush, you know. Mm -hmm. If I had my friends calling me and telling me, I'd be you know, there. my wife's friends, that my wife was missing and my four kids weren't at home, I'd be freaking out. Honestly. Hell of a metal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> Why did you park there? Because that's where I seen him parked. Okay. And when the oil and water guy approached you, why didn't you just keep looking around like you well, originally when, well, After he approached me and everything, because I was looking at the clock, because I need to be off somewhere close to the time frame, like 2.30ish and stuff like that, okay. so I can actually get home, because I live in Greeley, mm -hmm. and from Greeley to Surrey is a heck of a long drive. 
you know, and my yeah, wife please. babysits and everything else. So I want to get home whenever it's close to time because I'm not trying to milk the clock, get any extra overtime or anything like that. Right. So after he approached me, we talked for, you know, just a couple minutes and everything like that. He told me that if he found my crest cramps, that he would put in a tank battery for me. And that was it. I got right back in my pickup. I drove around slowly to the location, you know, drove around the edge of the location right here. I just drove around right here, okay. you know, and then just went ahead and took off. Okay. Why didn't you tell him the truth? Because I didn't want to tell him that I was searching for any kind of sp suspicious things on location. Yeah, that's what gets What would have been wrong with that, though, if he had just said that? See. Well, I know, but I mean, at the time, whenever I was approached, that's what I said, honestly. Okay. I mean, I'm not here to See, lie to you See, that part doesn't make sense. You know, Why would he not tell them about it, that he wanted to check something like that? And I've got no problem telling you exactly why I was on location. So, talk to your wife about this on uh, Monday when you got home. Well, yeah, because Shanann and uh, their friends Juanita, probably Juanita, you know, did the Thrive thing. Because mm -hmm. Juanita's a promoter as well, but she's never even hit her 4K on that, you know, and it just doesn't feel right, you know, for those girls to disappear and Shanann to disappear, and she's such a public person and everything like that. So the wife was worried about them. She wanted to make sure that they were going to be okay as well. What was your conversation about? What, tell me, not necessarily about, tell me what was your conversation like? Were you, were you guys, you know, convinced something had happened or just a little bit concerned? Well, or? we were concerned because, I mean, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities if they were having issues, you know, and she wanted to leave, if that was the case, for her to take the girls, because I figured she would, mm -hmm. you know, and go ahead and go off to a friend's house because he told me that he thought Shanann had went to a friend's house. That morning, that was so Crystal did. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't nothing out of the norm, you know. <clears throat> like she goes over to friends' house and stuff all the time. But that's what I told my wife. I was like, "Well, I don't know if she took off, went to a friend's house, you know, whatever the case." And then later on in the day, we found out the cell phone was still there, you know, and everything, the purse, all that kind of stuff. Didn't have time and to clean just up. Just didn't start adding up, you know. You never want to think that one of your coworkers would be capable of doing something like mm -hmm. that to a person, you know, anything, and then. So at what point do you start to think that um, Chris has done something? Well, the only part I started to think would be Wednesday. Because I drove out to location. You know, I wasn't out there very long on Tuesday. Didn't see anything out of the norm while I was there. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't look around. You know, I was just got back in my pickup and drove Apparently out. Apparently it was bare and feet. Wednesday, Prince I didn't out text him at all. At the grave. Nothing. I didn't, you know, try to check on him, anything. And then, okay, then Wednesday would be the day that you guys called me, well, mm -hmm. roughly around 10 o'clock. Yes, so, I think it yeah, was. And then come back to the office and have a talk with you, Joe. Were you out? At this location ever again after Tuesday? No, sir. I wasn't. Never again. Okay. Do you know who else has been out at that location um, since Cody Roberts was out at that location on Tuesday. Tuesday? He had, to, he had to do something out there. I think Cody Roberts was out there, though. Do you remember about yeah. what time? No, sir, I don't. That's just from Cody talking to me. Okay. Telling me that he was out at the location. Okay. Yeah. What about Melissa or Chad or anybody like that? Did they ever go back to 319? Well, I think Melissa would have been back out there because Melissa's been chatting with Cody. Okay. Because Cody starts um, automation cross training next week. Okay. So that's the whole reason why Melissa was out there anyway. Right. Because she's not the normal operator. She's just a trainee. She just got signed off on her SOPs, standard operating procedures. Mm -hmm. And then now we're feeling comfortable enough to let her run a route and see how she does. Okay. So that just happened to be the particular route when she drew. Hmm. There would be any reason for anybody to drive out here in the weeds? Out no, sir. There would be no reason at all for anybody yeah. to do that. Is that, um, is that permitted? So it doesn't make sense that, that. No, yeah. She, she would like, drive out, out there. there. Ranch, if you read that sign, it's posted mm -hmm. by that gate. Oh, yeah. You stay on that ranch <laughs> road. <laughs> That's right. You don't want to be caught outside of those ranch, on, you know, on the leash roads mm -hmm. that are out there because you will be your butt ripped. Yeah. I mean, most of our landowners that we have are like that. Yeah, sure. You know, even Mr. Batting is that way. Anything else that we haven't talked about regarding any of this stuff um, that you can think of that we need to cover? Even, even if you think it's not related or it, uh, it's frivolous or anything else you can think of. You know, suspicions, just rumors, um, anything else you can think of. NK? Right. Well, I'm trying to go through my head on everything that I could have said to him that day. I mean, with all this stuff that's going on, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's hard to remember. But I do, another thing um, that morning, he told me they were having issues and everything like that, but... Was it um, Monday morning? Yes. Yeah, you know, he said, yeah, we're having some issues and everything. And, you know, he's like, well, her wedding ring was laying on the counter. That's what he told me. Then it was the up in the bedroom. Ring was on the counter. And I was like, why would she leave her wedding ring <laughs> on the counter? He's like, well, I guess that she's just through with me. I don't know. You know, but he sounded hopeful that they could work things out. You know, so that didn't, you know, necessarily bother me at all. You know, he's told me that the wedding ring was laying on the counter. Counter where, do you say? No, I don't know if it was a kitchen counter, sir, or their dining room table, because they're right there next to each other. Okay. 
did he say anything about, you know, hey, this is going to be hard on the kids, um, you know, anything like that? No. He never spoke of his girls. Never did? No. Hmm. Like, 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 like he said a, that they didn't uh, go to school or whatever at CC and Bella, because I don't know if they had like a daycare or something that they go to every day, but he said, yeah, she didn't take them to daycare and uh, she didn't go to a doctor's appointment. That was it. That's all he ever spoke of the girls. But he just told me that him and Shanann had had issues and everything, and that's why I figured why, because she didn't get in until late Monday morning or Sunday night, whenever she got in. Mm -hmm. And I figured that they just couldn't sleep, honestly. is the reason why he looked the way he looked. I never put things out of sorts. He was up know, for a long time during that day. would have about things being out of sorts until nobody heard from her. Right. You know, and she's not that type of person at all. Does he generally talk about his girls on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, here and there, if they get to go do something. Okay. You know, um, he loved playing with them and everything. Uh, uh, last pictures I've seen, anyway, of the girls, other than when I, you know, I seen them on Friday with him. They were happy, <laughs> laughing, and everything. Why, well, I think somebody else Portland. murdered his girls. And, uh, you know, like, NK. the trip that they took out to the beach in North Carolina. My thoughts. You know, he always posts stuff like that, you know. And, you know, for the most part, if anybody asked him about his kids, he would just light up, you know. They were like the center of his world, you know, it's what it seemed like, you know, but now that we know what we know now, obviously that must have not been the case. Because any father that loves their children can never do something like that. So I'm just blown away with Great. this and I mean, I know me going out to location on Tuesday does not look good upon my part. And I told the guy I was looking for my wrench, mm -hmm. but I had that sick feeling in my stomach. Okay, we haven't heard anything from her. See, that's the questionable part of why he went out there. I tell authorities, you know, something about it that, you know, we could find out what happened, you know. I was praying to God that that wouldn't be true because that's a guy I worked with for two and a half years. Hey, you he's know? your buddy. Yeah, I mean, I would consider him a friend, you know. We didn't hang out outside of work hardly at all. I went down to his house twice for thrive parties, like I told you guys before. Mm -hmm. And then I met him at Fort Lufton because he asked me to try to put some programs in the fire stick for him. I said, okay. That was the only reason why we met. And it was a brand new fire stick straight out of the box. And I handed it back to him on location that month. Hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, but you just understand that we had come across this information about you being on site on Tuesday. Right. And, it, you know, it just... Just one of these loose ends that we need to no, tie up. No, I, I understand and, that. You know, you know, that's why I said I had no problem to come down and talk to sure, you. Sure, no problem. And I, and I appreciate that. You know, and and I think you you, know, you pretty well told me uh, that you recognized that something was wrong, and you, know, you put a few things together. Why would you go out that, there? That's that yeah. tripping it your like suspicion. That's why one of the first things I brought up to you guys is yeah, okay, we're at the tree nineteen. Mm -hmm. That was the site that I met him on. I got a map out of my truck. Anything I can do to help. I went and got you guys a map so you guys could take pictures of it or whatever. You called me and asked if we'd go out to Survey Ranch together. I said, yes, sir. Yep. You know, I didn't hesitate, and I drove straight from County Road 37 and 52, where I received your phone See, call, it sounds, straight to Hudson and waited there like he's you until you guys arrived explaining, on but it yeah. sounds kind of like guilty. I, mean, I wanted to help. Yeah. No, and I didn't I, know it was going to turn out this way. No, and I, I appreciate it. We appreciate you know, that. But, you know, and obviously, you, you thought something was up, because... Yeah, that wasn't never did any of this. Yeah, I mean, I like I pay attention to a lot of things. I mean, I've, I've got like ADD, you know. I notice stuff that's just different, you know, and that a lot of people just kind of. But I've got so much that runs through my mind all the time. I don't remember everything, but then Chad and I started talking about the day that we were on that location, and that's whenever I remembered all that stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna have a meeting with the gentleman today. I tell him everything that I know, just to see if I can help out in any way, shape, or form. Because, I mean, I, I can't believe what happened. Yeah. That's absolutely terrible. So he knows that then, what happened to read on them. number seven or something like that, that, the tanks were involved with that too? You know, possibly. I don't know if that's the truth or not. And I don't know if you guys can't say that's part of the investigation, but I was standing right there by those tanks, you know, and if I was that close to that, that blows my mind. It honestly does. See, he shows emotion. I'm not a process this. You know, I was starting to feel better a little bit, talking to the counselor a little bit. I didn't talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. We talked to him in the group, you know. And my buddy Tony Brown, he was bawling. You know, Chad McNeil was visibly upset. I'd been crying most of the night once I found out the news. And I don't know. I mean, anything I can do to help you guys, I'm more than willing to. Yeah, we appreciate that. But I just don't know. This is absolutely horrible. I've never been a part of this in my life. I've never been in trouble in my life, you know. I don't have any experience with talking to officers and, and, about that. Yeah. Well, and, and understand, we're not accusing you of it. Right, yeah. You know? I mean, but I know it looks we terrible. Just, this is one of those loose ends we need to tie up. Yeah. You know? 
It's just yeah. one of those loose ends we need to tie up. And I can, no, so I can no, I understand. Come back and I can say, yeah, he told us about you know X, Y, and Z, and this is why he was there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, that was for you guys. Yeah, no, yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. did 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 uh, Anna Darko bring in a counselor for you guys? They did. Oh, uh, it was a gentleman. It was an older gentleman. I don't remember his name. And I've got the paperwork that he gave us for. We have like a counseling hotline mm -hmm. that we can call if we need any help. And I believe he was here yesterday. As or sorry, today's Friday. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he's here today as well. Yeah. Okay. Because we had our meeting yesterday morning and he sat and talked to us for about an hour, you know. And then our boss came in and talked to us and he said, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to, you know, be able to say anything to you guys or anything about what had happened because was it, it was Wednesday night, right? That it came across the news that he had confessed. Is that correct? Yeah. That's yeah, late. Great. Late okay. Wednesday night. Yeah, late Wednesday yeah. night because I was just asleep and then Tony Brown calls me and he's bawling his eyes out. Yeah. And I said, This can't be true. And then we pulled it up, and we seen that it was true. And my wife cried unconsolably for an hour and a half. I was trying to calm her down. People are crying. I mean, it's just been tough on everybody. Yeah. So, but not him. I can't imagine the way that those families feel. Because they've been absolutely ripped apart. Oh, yeah. You know, and then to find out that she was pregnant with a little boy. Yeah. They invited me to their gender reveal party, you know, and then it got deleted. I didn't know who deleted it or nothing, but it just, you know, no gender reveal party. Because I believe that was supposed to take place on the 16th. <clears throat> Speaking of that, so you know who right. Nicole Utef you Other than seeing her on the news, sir, for the interview that she yeah. did. Yeah. That's the only that's person. Right. That's the only way you know who that is. No. Okay. Well, the other person that Nicholas that you guys have got going. Nicholas. Uh, well, yeah, not you guys, but interviews that you guys have seen on, online. He's a bald gentleman. And in this interview on the that news, guy. he's sitting on a park bench with his wife right next to him. Mm -hmm. That was a gentleman I was telling you about that Chris were running with all the time. Okay. You know, he was running together trying to yeah. get 5K. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Did you talk to him? Okay. But no, I didn't know any of the other Thrive group outside of any of that. Because the, the Thrive party that we went to, we built a vision board, which I still have in my house and my wife still has her. Because you're supposed to put your goals and cut out pictures and all that. So we done that with him. We ate supper with him. But like I said, that was, you know... Chris to retire. Because you know? yeah. I just met Shanann for the first time at our Anadarko Christmas party. Hey, off mortgage. Yeah, the last year's Christmas party. What else did you it know? say? I still have her. Earn all VIP events. Get team to Dallas. I am confident. I am determined. I am inspiring. I am me. I am unique. My own... Hundred free, so... This savings, 50K. This is my job complete. I'm trying to see if anything's on here that would be spark. I am 200K February. We are Miles Dallas. Hmm, interesting. Because you're supposed to put your goals and cut out pictures and all that. So we done that with them. We ate supper with them. But like I said, that was, you know, like February-ish or something, you know? Because I just met Shanann for the first Jeff time at Free. our Anadarko Christmas party. This most recent one? Yeah, the last year's Christmas party. You know, and I don't know what date that was or anything, sir, but, you know, because I, I text Chris and everything because we've been working together, you know, long enough, and he wanted to sit by my wife and I. So we hollered them. I got to meet Shanann, you know, and found out how bubbly her personality was and just how awesome she was. You know, and then I guess she had lupus, and by taking Tribe, it was able to help her, you know. Yeah. And so my wife is suffering from acid reflux and everything, and she said, well, that might help you. So I got my wife on Thrive, and she's been doing better ever since, you know. And I thank Shanann for that because Juanita had to take medications all the time that just weren't helping her, you know. So just, It's a terrible circumstance no matter how you look at it. It is bad. I mean, the only other situation that I've ever been close to that would even resemble this at all, which it doesn't, would be my dad's passing. And that's the closest I've been to anything like that. I've been pretty fortunate in my life not to have anybody I know ever have any serious trouble, you know, or nothing like that, or anybody else that I know personally pass. You know, all my friends are still alive, you know, by the grace of God. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. But to have something like this happen, See, the guy that I so spoke with every like freaking day for two and a half years, you know, and then just to go like that. And like I said on Friday, when I met him, he seemed fine, man. He was laughing, smiling. You know, he went to the console, and uh, it might still be in the console of that vehicle. They had gum, like a little um, bubble gum deal. It was white, and uh, it was like tangerine. 
and he gave it to each one of his girls, and he asked me what I like a piece of gum, and I took a piece of gum from him, you know? I just, it's not, not off at all on Friday, at all, just normal Chris, you know? And I can't fathom his clothes what would have happened between that time frame for any of this would take place. I just can't. But, yeah. I mean, anything y'all need from me. Yeah, we appreciate that. I'm more than willing to help, because I don't, I don't know what I can do at this point. So definitely a very interesting interview with Troy McCoy. Um, you guys want me to look into it. There are a couple discrepancies that are kind of like, oh, okay, hold on. Like, why are we going out to the survey? Uh, 319, because apparently he needed to get his crescent wrench. But I just it feel very off about that. Um, I mean, there's just a couple of things that strike me differently, which is th that part and the water truck. We don't know who that is. Um, the pictures that went out to, um, that Chris sent out to his team also sent out to Nicole. It's just like, they're kind of like backtracking and kind of covering up what they might've done. The whole fire stick thing was a possibility theory of fire stick being code for explosion. Again, your comments and your inquiries and your opinions. Definitely. I do value very much. So please let me know what you guys thought about Troy McCoy's interview. There's obviously more interviews that you want me to do. Apparently, uh, Shanann's best friend, Nicole Atkinson, you want me to do. Um, Nicole Atkinson's husband, Nate, um, the son. I mean, you guys want me to keep doing these? Hit the like button. Comment down below. Continue these uh, uh, interviews because you never know what could you learn from a di these different interviews. I can tell you right now that NK's interview was so relaxed and so like not what I've seen on these people that have no involvement like Troy McCoy. Like he was a, he was a worker. They drilled this man. Like he thought he was in trouble. But when you look at Shanann or uh, when you look at NK's, they're asking her like weird random stuff and getting told to shut up from the dad. And it was definitely weird. So again, I thank you guys for watching. Please take care, be safe. And as always keep nerding on and we will see you guys in the next video.